Hey folks, quick disclaimer about Greasy Says, my new show about being a game developer for 15 years who's brown. Okay, Greasy Says contains explicit language, adult situations, and viewer discretion is strongly advised. Right, Greasy Says is supposed to be a comedic take on what it's like to be in the gaming industry from my perspective, but I'm not out here trying to make people feel uncomfortable just for the sake of it. So, to sum it up, I have a potty mouth. Don't let your kids listen to this shit. And kings and queens above 18 only. Let's try that. All right. Lay is. Haha, <laughs> let's get this party started. Tied up with the professional. Lazy says. Uh, what the, what the, what the, what the fuck? What the, what the, what the, what the fuck? What the, what the, what the, what the fuck? But hold up. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greasy Says. My name is Greasy, a.k.a. Arturo, a.k.a. MQ, and I'm here to talk to you all about games. I'm here to talk to you about what it's like being a brown guy in America. I'm here to talk to you about what it's like being a brown guy in America and video games and how those things are a cross-section and the craziness and the experience that is unique to brown people like me all right sometimes i talk about games a lot about games sometimes i talk about life and real shit uh and today is no different i'm gonna let's let's kick off i got so much shit to talk about first off i just want to say fuck you elon musk fuck you and your internal emails all right i don't know i didn't read the (laughs) I shouldn't even say this. I didn't read the whole article. I saw the fucking headline like most people do. I read the headline and I formed my opinion based on a fucking headline without any further review. That's on American enough for you. That's on human enough for you. Anyway, fucking Elon says in in some leaked private email chain uh, that he wants, you know, workers to come back to the office, to the factory, to whatever. And he used the phrase, what do you say? Go pretend to work somewhere else. Ooh, Ellie. Ellie, 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 Ellie. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? That South Africa getting a little bit too heated up in your blood, huh? Yeah, yeah, you trying to put people back to work. You trying to get on that slave shit, huh, Ellie? Ellie, stop your bullshit. Stop your bullshit. You're a CEO. What do you mean pretend to get paid somewhere else? You pretend to get paid every day. You pretend to do work every day. Not paid. You get paid by pretending to do work. You're a fucking CEO. CEOs don't do shit. CEOs sit around and they wait. And they talk with their buddies. And they go to their fucking Epstein parties. And they rub elbows with all these fucking other evil people. And they make deals. They get deals done with their mouth. You know what I'm saying? They're they're prostitutes. They're prostitutes. Alright? So Elon, get fucked, bro. Get fucked. What do you mean, pretend to work somewhere else? Yeah, your, your stocks might be in the dumps right now, but everybody else's is too, and you just bought Twitter. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? It's not like you need the money. It's not like you're really doing anything big anymore. Like, you, you, you already made your billions. You already have your diamond money, your diamond mine money from your family. So shut the fuck up. If I was working for Tesla, I would have write down motherfucker email, be like, yo, you pretend... If we pretend, if we stop pretending to work, yo ass definitely, yo, anyway, I don't even know what I would write. I, I wouldn't write shit. I wouldn't write shit. I'd just be like, fuck that guy. That guy's a fucking prick. And I just keep it moving. Because my life and my earnings, I can't let that shit be affected by some fucking douchebag. And that's the thing about CEOs, y'all. CEOs talk for a living. They lie for a living. I'm going to do an episode about CEOs. Trust me on that. But fuck that dude. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about some, uh, some real life gaming shit. So this fucking PC Gamer article about CD Projekt Red pulling the plug on a real life Witcher school. Pause. What does that even fucking mean? A real life Witcher school. I'll tell you what it means. I'll tell you exactly what it means. It means a bunch of white dudes, right? And like a handful of overweight white bitches in a field or at a fucking a place that's usually used for a summer camp dressed up like Geralt and 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 fucking 
chubby versions of Triss Marigold. Alright? And uh, motherfuckers dressed up like dandelion and shit playing a fucking loot. Prancing around in the fields. In the middle of nowhere. That they paid money to go do that. Yelling agony, agony, agony. Or ignis, ignis, ard, ard. Or whatever the fuck them spells are called at each other. Okay? It's a fucking, uh, it's, it's a live role play. It's a LARPing fucking sesh. But CD Projekt Red, you know, being from Eastern Europe, and we all, like, you know, things ain't, we all thought that shit was over over there, but it's not, okay? It's not. It's, it's, it's right in your backyard here in America. It, it, that Nazi shit and that white supremacy shit is all around us. It's, it's right next door. You know what I mean? Make sure you know how to fight. Make sure you know how to shoot. That's all I'm saying. I'm getting militant. I'm getting fucking militant this week. I don't give a fuck. Elon set, Ellie set me off. So pre- CD Projekt Red pulls a plug on this Witcher school, this real life Witcher school, because of potential ties to, to, to white supremacy. And like people in the organization are going to be spreading white supremacy to these fucking idiots who just want to dress up like, like Geralt. How many times do these two things have to be intertwined before we, we start like, you know, questioning shit? Like the Witcher as a series it has the same tone as Game of Thrones, right? It's that same shit where we all want to go make make Europe great again. Go back to when it was beheadings and white people ruled everything and, and, and you could put a motherfucker to death for, for telling a bad joke, right? Let's bring back white supremacy. So of course they're going to infiltrate this shit. Of course. You think the dude who wants to dress up as Witcher, uh, as, as Geralt of Rivia, in fucking wherever the fuck Eastern Europe has ever crossed paths with, with another brown person? You think that per you think the same motherfucker who's gonna go to, to Witcher school in real life? What the fuck? Uh, you, how you think he felt? How you think he felt about them? Uh, chain, what's her name? What's what's Geralt's girlfriend's name? You know what I'm talking about. What the fuck is her name? I gotta go look it up. Hold up. Hold up. Geralt oh, oh, Yennefer Yennefer Alright You wanna bet all these fucking White supremacist ass bitches Who went to fucking witcher school You think they were upset When Yennefer got changed into a beautiful Exotic Fucking gorgeous Knock you down out your fucking shoes Indian lady How you think they felt about, felt about that Huh Huh they should have made Dandelion Black just to fuck with y'all. Can't stand these motherfuckers, man. How are they in games? How are y'all letting them in games? You know why? Because nobody's saying shit. Because y'all are nobody there to call y'all out on your bullshit. Y'all just keep perpetuating the same bullshit. You imagine if you sent your little kid to that witcher school and that witcher school got that witcher school indoctrinating your kid into some white supremacy shit and now your kid is out there looking for guns, looking for ways to fuck with brown people, fuck with Jews and shit. The fuck, man? So I mean, props to CD Project Red pulling a plug or whatever. But that's not that can't be that's not the end of the story. That's not the end of the story. How do these people find their way in to the gaming culture? That's another episode right fucking there. I'm just, now I'm just listing episodes that I'm going to do when I get heated up. What the fuck? What the fuck? All right. So since I'm on this rant, all right, I'm going to just take it to the next level. And you might call bullshit on me and you might get angry and feel free to let me know on fucking any of the social medias. Greasy says on TikTok, uh, 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 uh. Uh, Greasy says on Instagram Greasy says on Facebook Come come fucking talk to me if you feel bad about any of this shit You think I'm full of shit, whatever Come come talk to me We'll have a discussion So let me ask you this White people out there What's the real reason that you fly in all them Ukraine flags? Huh? What's the real reason That you have 
those flags hanging up outside of your house or stuck in your windows for people to see. Why? Is it because you see an injustice and you see a, 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 a war going on? You see people getting killed and, and you're upset about that? And you want to support those people by f flying a flag? Is that why? Is that why you have the Ukraine flag flying? Uh, a sticker on your car? Because you, you care about human suffering? Hmm. Okay. Let me ask you this. Isn't there human suffering going on right in your backyard? Isn't there fucking white boys, 18-year-old white boys running up in black neighborhoods and killing fucking mad people in a grocery store for no fucking reason? Just because he hates, he hates black people? Or people running up in schools, blazing up people, killing all kind of children and shit? What, uh, is it because we don't have a flag for that? Does a motherfucker need to make a flag for that so you can fly that shit outside your house and, and make stickers and stick that shit on your car? Nah. The reason you're flying out that flag is not because you fucking care about people. It's not because, well, it is because you care about people, but it's not because you care about suffering and it's not because you want to support a country that's being wronged and, and, and has atrocities happening to it because there's atrocities happening right in your fucking backyard and you don't give a fuck about that. You ain't flying no flag for that shit. You come up with this all lives matter bullshit and all that, right? Half black, half black lives matter, like Todd Rex said. That shit was hilarious. I think... It's because, and it's not even your fault. I think it's because it's other white people. And, and I, this is not even a new idea, okay? I heard this idea from a homie who, other homie came up with the, with, the, with the idea, with the thought process. I think it's because you feel the exact same way that I feel when I see a whole grocery store of black people get shot up by a white, uh, white supremacist, by a terrorist. You relate to those people. You see other white people die and you see other white people suffering and you say, shit, that's me. That's me. I can relate to that. I feel for that. It's not because you care about the suffering they're going through. It's because you, you are putting yourself in their shoes and you are experiencing that suffering secondhand, third hand. It's separated, but it hits your heart in a different way. And you feel a need to act, even though it don't do shit, because flying that fucking Ukraine flag ain't doing shit. You ain't doing nothing. Okay, you just... You just bought a Pokemon card as far as I'm fucking concerned. But I'm saying it's, it's only because it's, it's people that look like you, that you give a fuck and that you care so much and you're so outraged because you don't feel the same outrage when there's black and brown people dying out here. And I know it's all, all of you fucking couch politicians too, like, like people like, like your parents and shit. You know what I mean? Who just, all, they, all they think about is politics. All they listen to is the news and reading the politics and getting all wrapped up in that shit. I know that's just part of this shit too. I know it's part of the old Russian scare from back in the 80s and it's bringing back all these fucking feelings you had about the Cold War. When in fact, the Cold War is the same shit. Like it didn't affect you in no fucking way, did it? You were still buying your fucking acid wash jeans and, and rolling around on your fucking skateboards, right? Nothing changed for you. <coughs> anyway let's bring it back up let's bring it back up uh welcome to greasy says you know what i mean this show is about me a brown game developer talking about his experience in the gaming industry and obviously talking about other things and how it shapes the gaming industry and how it shapes all of us because art is a reflection of life and games are art so all these things are related so it's not this podcast is not just about oh this new game came out here's how it plays and there's the rating on the graphics and the sound and an overall experience and you know, it's not just about that it's about a lot of things because you know too often games separate themselves gaming separates themselves from the real world when in fact as we can see with the fucking witcher school the real world is not separated from games all the shit, all the bad shit that happens in the real world comes right back in the games. And then we feed ourselves and the cycle continues. It's like a fucking, it's like a fucking, uh, uh, what is it like? It's like the great, it's like a meat grinder. It's like the great meat grinder. All the shit goes in, it gets pulped up, it gets shipped on the fucking conveyor belt, gets eaten by a bunch of other meat, and then that meat dies and back into the fucking meat grinder. That's what it is. Anyway, welcome to Greasy Says. All my greasy people out there, thank you for listening. Uh, 
Hope you're catching up. I saw some people who were catching up like crazy. It must. My, my wife said it must have been for um for like a long weekend, and and maybe people were downloading it to take on their car rides or their road trips, or whatever. If that's the case, cool. I like it. But remember to tell your friends about Greasy Says. Tell spread the word. Uh, spread the word that there's there's a cat out here talking about the Brown experience in games, and you need to hear this shit. And if you have people in the industry, they need to hear this shit. You know what I'm saying? And greasy, greasy people is for everybody. I mean, except kids, obviously, because kids, kids are precious. They don't need to hear my ass cussing every fucking five minutes. But Greasy says for everybody. So tell everybody about Greasy says. You can find me on social media. <coughs> can you tell them I'm sick again? Yeah. The never ending fucking somebody text me like, yo, I just listened to the podcast. I, and this motherfucker sick again? Yes. I have a sinus infection now, a, a, a really bad one. Like, I'm on I, antibiotics and shit. Seeing lights and shit when I try to go to sleep is crazy. Um, it's, it's, like a tri- it's like tripping, but it's not fun because I'm not feeling anything. I'm just seeing all this shit, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, tell your peoples. Reach out. Greasy says on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Hit me up, ask me questions. Tell me what I should be checking out. Send me articles, whatever, so I can rant and rave and get pissed off. Uh, and I'm also M-C-U-E. That's MQ on Twitter. And uh, I got all my music under MQ on Spotify, on Bandcamp, on SoundCloud. So go listen to shit. Spread the word. Uh, let me know what you think. Comment. Give me feedback, etc. All right, so let's pick a key and start this fucking show off. I'm trying to get the dough off. Let's get this fucking show off. Won't you fucking show off? Let's get this fucking show off. I'm trying to get the dough off. You're trying to blow off. Today's key is shit. Don't make no sense. Shit. Don't make no sense. Shit. Don't make no. Shit. Don't make no sense. Shit. Don't make no sense. Shit. Don't make no. Shit. Don't make no sense. Shit. Don't make no sense. Shit. Don't make no. Shit. Don't make no sense. Greasy, since you're so heated up already, why don't you talk about vices in video games? Isn't it weird how we feel about vices in games? All right, let me take you back, right? Remember back when Mortal Kombat came out and all the parents were in uproar about the level of violence in that game? People ripping heads off, people tearing hearts out of your chest, people eating you alive burning you alive, all these horrible images that some parents were in an uproar about. To us as kids, it seemed ridiculous because we, we knew it wasn't real. It was new and cool. It was video games. And it was the beginning of ultraviolence in the art of video games. Now, I remember back then thinking, there's no way that something like Mortal Kombat could make me want to hurt another person or make me want to tear the heart out of another person's chest. And I still believe that. Playing a video game doesn't automatically make you a psycho. But in recent years, I begin to, I begin to think that violent video games may inflate already violent tendencies in people who have trouble separating reality from fiction. I guess that's a nice way of saying crazy motherfuckers who play violent video games learn how to do violent shit really well, and they get to practice a lot, like as much as they want. I wonder how the moms from the 80s and 90s would feel about something like that. They'd probably give me like a giant I told you so. I told you so, I told you so, I fucking told you so, I told you so, I fucking told you so, I told you so, you dumb bitch. I told you so. All right, on another level, America has always been hesitant, and dare I say a little bit scared, of sex and sexual relations, uh, and, sex, and sexual situations. 
American media would easily show you 10 straight hours of white supremacist violence, murder cases, highway accidents, famine, brutality, suffering. But if you flash your titty, if a titty fall out, it's the end of the show. If we talk about sex, it's the end of the show. If we talk about sexual health, it's the end of class. Because Jesus saves lives, not condoms. Jesus wanted me to have this baby. Sex and even naked people in Western video games is still kind of a novelty. And it's mostly through games made in other countries that come over to the States that have sexual themes in them that even expose North Americans to sexual content in their games. Not to mention sexuality, which is different, and sensuality, which is very important, and all the things that make a trigger-pulling white kid nervous so they hide in their phone. If video games can teach so much to us about violence and the brutality of humanity, it's probably likely that it could teach us about the beautiful, sensual, sexual, love-based parts of ourselves and our society. And there are games like that out there, for sure. But they're not as play- but they're not played as much as Shoot Me in the Face Part Seven. You know what I'm saying? This fall, shoot everyone in the face. Part Seven, the unfacing. Pre-order now. Then I think about drugs in games. Now I love drugs. I think everybody should try drugs if at least once. Crazy Sense does not suggest or condone the use of any drugs for any reason whatsoever. It may not agree with you. Like, some people can't do that shit. And then you should stop. And don't start with some fucking crazy hard stuff, you fucking idiot. But I've always found it interesting how game developers have been representing drug use in games. Like, in GTA, for example, you can light up a joint or a blunt and the screen gets fuzzy... Or you can, like, drink some alcohol in GTA or Yakuza and the screen gets kind of blurry and your your character starts stumbling around. That stuff is pretty standard. But I'm really interested in how game developers are rendering psychedelic experiences. Because each psychedelic experience is unique to the individual. So the psychedelic experience in, like, Far Cry 3, for example, comes from the mind's eye of probably one or a handful of people who had that kind of experience and then it's a bunch of artists following that art direction or that direction creative direction but i hope to see i hope that the more we see psychedelic experiences in games the more we'll see the variety of what that experience looks like for each person that shit really excites me but of all these vices that i'm talking about violence is definitely the worst right I mean, having sex with someone or dropping acid with someone is way better than murdering someone. Am I right? So isn't it strange how like North America and other parts of the world would rather see someone shooting someone in the head in a video game than a VV, uh, than a VV poo poo or a pee pee touching each other or a guy smoking a joint. It's not really games, right? It's not just games. It's like a societal thing. And it's a really fucking weird one. What's your take on vices in games? Violence better than drugs or sex? Or violence the worst out of everything and how come it's in every game? What the fuck? Hit me up. Crazy says TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. What you play? What you play? What you play? What you play? What, you what are you playing? What you playing? I just finished playing. Literally just finished. Gris. Gree? Is it Gris? Or is it Gree? Or is it Grease? The, the shit is spelled G-R-I-S. I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, you might have seen it on Steam uh, for sale at various points. It's a 2D... Um, I want to say it's like a 2D hold right game, but that's, that's not a fair assessment. It's completely non-violent, right? So there's no attacks. You're not, you're not killing anything. 
it's all about traversal, right? This game is, it's 2D and it's all about 2D platforming and traversal. Ways to get through the environment. You never fire a shot. You never kill a single thing. Uh, which is cool, which is unique. It plays, it's very fluid. It plays like Ori in the Blind Forest. Beautifully animated, beautifully drawn. It has this very like hand-drawn, hand-animated feel. Reminds me of like a, a like heavy metal from the 80s, that style of, of animation. Almost rotoscoped, but a little bit more uh, pure in its animation style. A little bit more snazzy than straight up rotoscoped. Fantastic, amazingly beautiful art style. That's the reason I bought it. I saw the art style and I was like, I gotta, I gotta own this shit. I gotta pay whoever fucking decided to animate this monstrosity. Whoever lost five to ten years of their life trying to animate this fucking thing. It's crazy. Uh, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss, right? I think this, this game, the story of this game, this game is either about uh, the relationship between a mother and her daughter, or I should say her, a daughter and her mother, and something happened in their relationship that damaged their relationship for forever. And this game is basically a metaphor for that, of how the daughter is trying to reconcile the the break between her and her mother. That's one take. Also, I think it might be about uh, a lesbian breakup and the person you're playing as, the lady you're playing as, got her her mind blown. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this is about a, like a girl who got dumped by a way more experienced girl who busted her cherry and made her come for the first time and like changed her whole life. And now she's gone. Now they've broken up. Personally, I think my second bet is what it's really about. But I don't know. It's one of those games that you could play and interpret the story however you see it fitting together. If you ever played this shit, let me know what you think the story is. I think it's about some girl who busted her nut in a way she never busted her nut before. And now she's broken hearted. You know what I mean? But you got to play it to kind of see where I'm coming from. They got a lot of imagery in there. The blooming flowers, the 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 power up about singing. Like, you know, you just, you just start singing and flowers start blooming. I mean, come on, man. So, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think it's on the nose. But Grease or Grease or Gris or however the fuck you pronounce that shit by Nomada Studios. Pretty great game. Short. I mean, I beat that shit in like a, 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 a Saturday afternoon. Three hours, four hours tops. But it's, it's like a cool game to sit on and play with like a, a buddy or your lady or your man or your significant other. It's great to look at. It's beautiful to look at. It's beautifully animated. The music. Oh, my God. Let me shout out the music by, uh, I guess it's like either a band or a producer and like a couple of friends called The Berlinist. And they created a very cool synth slash classical a melancholy soundtrack for this game that really fit its vibe and did its service. Sound design was spectacular too. Uh, not by the Berlinists, but by uh, Nomada Studios uh, audio people. Um, I think his name was Ramon something. I don't know. I can't remember. But a cool game to throw some money at if you're trying to support some some different shit. Devolver uh, published it. You know, they always come with the fresh shit. They always come with the off-kilter shit, you know. So, yeah, I'm glad I supported this game. I'm glad I finally got around to playing it. And I highly recommend it to anyone looking for a quick, simple, non-violent, beautifully hand-drawn, uh, Unity-style experience. Go check that shit out. Tell him Greasy sent you.
I got a couple of uh, shout outs. Well, sh- I got a couple of comments from people uh, about previous episodes, so I'll share them here. Actually, one of them was a comment. I was just rolling around with a homie, and uh, he said, I should do a segment about the weird shit that white people do. <laughs> Which is interesting because I don't feel like I need a segment about that. I feel like I, I do that all the time, right? That's, that's kind of what I do. Uh, and I don't know if I did that, wouldn't it just make my podcast about white people and I want it to be about brown people and black people? So that wouldn't really work. But it's a hilarious idea. Hilarious idea. A segment about weird, weird shit that white people do. I'll think about it. I don't know. I'll think about it. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, oh, yeah. In the last episode, in episode, where are we on now? 10? So in episode 9 of season 2 of Greasy Says, I talked about a really embarrassing story that happened to me at a pool party and on a roof at a game conference time. And I, I, a homie of mine who was at that reached out to me and he was like yo i remember that party i was at that party and i don't remember what happened what you said happened and happened and i was like all right well i guess but at the same time you, i said you was just as faded as me though so you probably didn't even know what was going on and you know you was blurry as fuck too so he he doesn't think he said he, he didn't see that shit happen i know it happened but maybe he was like off on the side or something or like doing something else but then he reminded me that security did ask us to leave, which I totally forgot. So that's a hilarious end to that story. We got kicked out of our own shit for being too rowdy. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking rock star living right there, huh? So yeah, I appreciate that uh, reality check <laughs> on your boy. You know what I mean? Sometimes you remember shit mad different. Like you make yourself a hero and all kind of shit. Like you, you, the mind is crazy. The memory is, the past can be twisted so easily. But uh, thanks for writing in. Uh, thanks for, for, for hollering at us on Greasy Says here. Remember, y'all could write in uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Just hit me up. Send me a message. And I might talk about it on the show. Uh, yeah. And let me know how I'm doing. Give me feedback, whatever, you know. Remind me of what really happened in the scenario I might have been talking about. This week is not really complicated. What can we do to make the world a better place? To make the world a better what? Place to live, place to survive, place to thrive. To survive, to survive, to just drive. No more triggers. No more triggers. No more triggers. So no more triggers on these guns. No more triggers on these controllers for the guns. No more triggering our wrath and our fury. No more triggering our sensitive sides for no reason. No more being triggered. No more triggers. Yes, indeed, a do. All right, y'all. This is a, this has been another episode of Greasy Says. Um, real quick before we go, uh, I want feedback from listeners out there. I need that feedback. Um, write to me, tell me. Even if you told me before, I might need a reminder um, about parts you like about the show, parts you don't like about the show. Somebody hit me up recently. I was like, they they really like this one medicate and meditate that I did. Like the song for it was really dope. I was personally thinking like, do medicate and medicate, medit- meditates make sense 
like does anybody fucking care about that at the end of a show but apparently they do so like that kind of feedback helps me out so if there's a part of the show you're like this shit sucks or this shit rules and keep this around you know what i mean or if you think about cutting this don't cut this shit or shit you might miss that i did in the past or whatever just let me know because i'm trying to you know always change the show um but that's it for now uh i'll see y'all in the next one thank you again for listening remember to do all the things with the socials and all of that shit and uh hope y'all enjoyed this round of this show all the music all, all, all everything that we talked about hope i didn't uh, rub y'all too much the wrong way but that's how it goes sometimes fuck it it's my fucking show i can say whatever the fuck i want this is this this i do live in america and you can say whatever the fuck you want in america which is pretty fucking crazy and pretty amazing so that's that's one thing to be grateful for you know what i mean greasy people thanks for coming out remember to like subscribe and comment and give me that feedback tell me to not buy that gun i was thinking about buying and until next time it's me greasy and i'm checking out with the magazine yeah i'm checking out with the magazine Put your fucking gun on safety Cause I checked that with the magazine Latest